This evening we have a group of Richmond activists who are outside the Richmond City Hall near the Richmond General Assembly to gather to have a vigil for the Virginians who are going to die if we do not expand Medicaid. The Kaiser Family Foundation estimates that 600 people, citizens of Virginia, could die if we don't expand Medicaid. Why have we not expanded Medicaid? In Virginia, the governor wants to expand Medicaid. However, the Virginia legislature does not want to expand expand Medicaid. They do not want to take the 100% free matching money that they would get from the federal government for 2014, 2015, and 2016 to ensure that the working poor, the people making minimum wage, the people working in fast food restaurants, the people working at Walmart, and in other retail positions have the ability to go and see a doctor when they get sick. In light of, we are going into flu season, and flu can be a deadly disease for people who already have a compromised immune system. This is very, very critical that we support expansion of Medicaid now. So we will be at the Virginia Assembly when they reconvene demanding that they expand Medicaid. Hello, my name is Eileen Davis and I've been a registered nurse for upwards of 30 years. I've worked in the clinic setting, I've worked in the emergency room, I've worked in public health. And I would, I'm here to, today to say that Marketplace Virginia, Medicaid expansion, actually in the long run will save Virginia money. It is extremely costly for people to crawl into an emergency room because they have nowhere else to go. It is extremely expensive to let that flu turn into pneumonia, to let that pain turn into emergency surgery. It, 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 is, not, it is the most expensive care delivery paradigm with the poorest outcomes. The delegates in Virginia need to understand that. They need to understand that when you go to the emergency room, when you go to the emergency room and you are seeking emergency care, and this is this message for all the people out there that have insurance. If you go to the emergency room and you have insurance and you're clogged and you're waiting for four hours to have your kid checked for that possible broken arm at the Little League game and you're wondering why it's taking so long. It's taking so long because there are people in that emergency room that are there because they have nowhere else to go. They, it's taking long in the, and that will delay your care. That will make your chest pain turn into you know, you're more a danger. Not only are you more inconvenienced sitting in the emergency room for two and three times longer than you need to because of all of the clinic stuff that should go to a doctor's office because the man that woke up at 10 o'clock at night and couldn't breathe and he's been sick for a week finally gets talked into going to go in the emergency room. That person is going to be sicker and he's going to be more expensive to treat and he's going to take up three times more health care dollars. There's a reason why when you go to the hospital at Tyler all is $20 and a roll of toilet paper is $23 because they've got to pick up that money somewhere else. So those of you who think that you have private insurance and that you're immune from this and this is not something that you need to worry about, guess again because it's called, it's called cost shifting and every time somebody shows up at a hospital who doesn't have the ability to pay for their care, you're paying through it, through it for it anyway. You're paying for it in a, in a, in a roundabout way because everything thing you're getting, every time you go in, you're supplementing the care of two and three people behind you that do not get it. The other thing that you need to understand is that we talk about, oh, well, veterans can get, you know, the veterans have the veteran system. Well, I can't tell you how many times I've had a female come into the, to a clinic for people who don't have insurance, and I've done a lot of pro, pro bono work with the uninsured in our community. There are over 6,000 uninsured people in, in Greater Richmond. 6,000 people. And, when the, you know, and a lot of times when these women come in, you've got a woman who's 49, 50 years old. She hasn't had a pap smear in 20 years. And you ask her, 
why she doesn't have insurance and there's always a different story but a lot of the times they will tell you that they have a husband that gets their care at the VA so their husband gets their care at the VA but there is an entire silent army out there of uninsured women who are married to veterans who get their care at the VA so when we say that people can, that veterans can get their care at the VA overwhelmingly veterans who are getting their care at the VA have wives or, or husbands who don't have health care at all we need to remember those people also when people go on Medicare when you know there's a there's an entire army of people out there that I call the waiting for Medicare people those are the people that have diabetes they have high blood pressure they've got you know problems that they're choosing to ignore and they know they need to get help but they're gonna wait till Medicare kicks in in 2016 so what they do is they crawl in and the, and the numbers bear this out they crawl in the day they qualify for Medicare and the first two three months on Medicare is it's a very expensive time. Why? Because Medicare money is paying cleanup for all of the stuff that's been allowed to just be neglected. You know, the diabetic is, you know, is, is far sicker than they would have been if they had been getting diabetic care all the time. They've already got the peripheral neuropathy. They've already got the macular degeneration. They've already got a lot of the side effects that make the fact that their care for their diabetes was delayed. The person with high blood pressure is untreated. Um, you want to you talk about an expensive paradigm. Don't treat high blood pressure because a person has nowhere to go and doesn't get their blood pressure checked. Then when they have that stroke and go on disability, we the taxpayers can pay thousands of dollars a month for their disability payment. It is an expensive and it's an inhumane paradigm of care that we're giving in this country. Marketplace Virginia works. Marketplace Virginia is, be, is being done in other states and it's working. We are losing money from the federal government that needs to come to this state. It will, it will improve the lives of all Virginians and as we're all worried about the public scare of, of diseases that might be spread through the public sector, it places all of us at risk when there is a segment of our population that doesn't have access to timely health care and will wait until they're absolutely too sick. We need to let, we, people need to have a place to go when they don't feel well. They need it for long-term health and they need it for public I health. I'd like to talk Thank a you. bit about mental health and what the dollars for Medicaid might mean for that. Mental patients in this country are one of the most vulnerable populations. They don't have the money to make political contributions. They don't perhaps vote because they're unaware and they're not even aware that they're being screwed by politicians. And we think uh, the money that would be made available for Medicaid would allow people to have outpatient treatment. And you say, what happens with people with no insurance? The working poor, the folks that work at McDonald's, at Walmart, and many of the grocery stores. When they have a mental health emergency, they're treated in hospitals and jails. Approximately $950 a day at a hospital and about $3,500 a month in jail. We need Medicaid expansion to care for the mentally ill people in Virginia. Thank you.